everyone. Welcome to Accidental Experts. We're your host. I'm Danny, And I'm Tay. And this is our first episode. I can't believe we're doing this. We have been planning on doing this for so long. And we're, we've talked about it since, yeah, last year. So this is our very first episode, which I'm really excited about. And I, I kind of just want to talk to you guys about what this is going to be about. Yeah, what, but, what is an accidental expert? Yeah, I mean... I think I'm going to ask you that, Tay. Uh, you're what? throwing it back to me. I'm throwing it back to you. Jeez, okay, okay, okay. So what is an accidental expert? We had this idea, it feels like, so long ago. And we ourselves are accidental experts. We kind of fell into our careers. And not to toot our own horns, but we are successful. And people come to us, they want to hire us to design their spaces. Or they just look to us for inspiration of like how to think outside of the box in terms of color and fun and interiors Mm -hmm. and we didn't intend on this life yet here we are yeah it was extremely accidental which I think is honestly kind of inspiring and so what we wanted to do is meet more creatives because we know this happens a lot but not a lot of people talk about it often and it's just personally I'm interested and I think a lot of people are interested in you see someone who's successful, who's doing something like considered a dream job. Like mm-hmm. you are making art all day. How yeah. did you land that job or be able to support yourself by doing what you love? We want to know. Yeah. Everyone wants to know. Everyone wants to know because <laughs> everyone wants that dream job. Yeah. Whatever it is for you personally. We're going to be talking to creatives, you know, that fell into this niche category. It doesn't even have to be niche, but just this expertise that you would have never thought you could, could be, be a doing. Career, yeah. Exactly. Like with, um, clams with teeth. Or like cracker clips or you're designing escape rooms. Exactly. So we're going to be doing so many things on here and just inspiring you guys along the way because I know there's just so many people out there who think there's one traditional path you have to go mm-hmm. through, which isn't true. So we're here to remind you guys that you have different options and we want to inspire you on here honestly and another aspect about this which i love is we are we're traveling we're going to be in a different city for every segment and we get to speak to artists in those cities and also see inside their homes see their artist studios and i personally i mean danny and i do interiors i am so excited for that to see the creative spaces that people live in yeah. and we can even do some little home tours for we'll special posting ones on social media yeah. yeah i know this isn't this is a podcast so you guys will probably be hearing this on audio but we'll be having videos as well because we're just really passionate about people's interiors yeah <laughs> and a little a little extra wholesome bit is the people that we're going to be interviewing are people that we are genuinely fans of and have been fans of for years we've been following these people for a long time so we are just gonna be worldwide like honestly we just came from australia we we were in australia and we were talking about how we wish we would have started it there because there's so many creatives we want to there's creative to over there yeah we want to like we genuinely want to ask questions and i think other people would have similar questions to them as well and we're gonna be asking sort of spicy questions because we have very little filter like i want to know about money and pay and how are they successful yeah i mean the things that people don't actually talk about especially to the public like we want to give you guys all the insight and the details that go into running a small business or running a big business you know like just anything or times that they have failed and almost have given up exactly just all the spice and all the things that people don't really show on social media or don't even talk about it because you know sometimes people just want to hear the positives but we're here to give you all we're here to be really big bummers and talk about the negative (laughs) (laughs) no no we're pretty positive people um i would say i'm like i mean i'm I'm really positive anyone who sees our social media i think we exude Mm -hmm. color happiness and exactly yeah playfulness but i think that also inspires us because on our social medias it's a lot about like staying positive and only showing the good so we are also really passionate about showing what really is happening behind the scenes also another aspect that This is like an interview show, but we're also going to do little episodes like this where it's just you and me and we can talk about our own experiences as Mm -hmm. being successful content creators and what all of that entails, the good and the bad. Yeah. And in this episode, we're going to kind of 
dive right into our success story and kind of how we ended up being accidentally professional decorators because I know you didn't go to school for this. I didn't go to school for you this. You barely went to school at all. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a little bit, but, yeah. but we really, really just accidentally fell into this. And now, you know, we're professionally decorating people's spaces, designing people's spaces, and we're just traveling now and doing all these cool things. So let's dive right in and talk about our stories. Please, let's talk about ourselves. Come on. <laughs> okay, I want to know about your story story start to finish and then oh, it's, it's I also, a long one I want let's tell the story the timeline of your start and then my start and where we collide our start yes, how we collide <laughs> how it's we so started cute. it is really cute I feel like that is a big part of my career so Me? it'll <laughs> yes yeah I mean look at us we're literally I love you. <laughs> we're currently sitting in LA at a studio yeah. with our crew like doing a podcast right now we so, would not be doing this without each other exactly it's really so beautiful you, you really are like a big part of oh, my story of my same. success story <laughs> um even though which by the way I I don't feel like Tay and I really feel like we have fully succeeded and like oh. what we want to do we have really high goals yeah and we're so, hard on so, ourselves yeah we'll be talking about that but i also just feel like um being a creative and and kind of being an entrepreneur i can never say that word <laughs> even though i've been like an entrepreneur since i was out the womb um i just feel like you know being a part of you know part of being an entrepreneur and doing these things i feel like you never feel like you ever fully reached your goal like yeah. there's still more and you can still keep growing. And I think even I mean, though that could be, even though way. it could be unhealthy, yeah. it can also be healthy because, you know, you keep in striving this world, for more, you keep striving for more, you keep growing, you keep like, you know, becoming better at your craft and just growing. I really, really liked this thing that someone told me that, you know, we're kind of like goldfishes and you kind of like outgrow your fishbowl. And I feel like that's like who we are. Oh, we're goldfish. Yeah. We are we are not complacent in our successes, which, like, sort of toxic. Like, we're <laughs> never happy with what we achieve, but that also makes us strive for way more. And, yeah. And makes us continue to be more and more successful. Exactly. So, we need to get a balance of, like, some healthy complacency. We're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> but right now, we're too busy uh, doing things. Okay. So, yeah, where do we story. even begin? I want to know, like, I just, it's such a long story. I feel like we could make, like, 16 episodes yeah. about our story. Uh, um, oh, I can, okay, well, to start it off, to start it off, mm -hmm. I found out about you, um, you know, on TikTok, you can, when you look at your following list, it literally tells you who you followed by the order in which you followed yeah. people. yeah. You are like the first 10 people I ever followed on TikTok. I am obsessed it's with that. It's crazy. But what's insane about you is that you literally started TikTok and immediately, like by your second video, it blew. Um, it was my first video. Okay? It was it was actually your first video. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I saw your first video, the one of you decorating like your entire house. It has like 50 million views or something. It's like insane. And Oh, okay. My first video is just me doing a silly little DIY of like putting up greenery in my bedroom oh, like okay. fake greenery that's where it started yeah and my very first video had like two million views no i saw your 50 million one that's pinned right now of mm -hmm. you like doing the ceiling in your house and i was like holy shit you know like i've been on tiktok for a little bit i think i had already been on tiktok for a year already and i was i felt a little lonely in the space because i just felt like there wasn't a lot of other creatives or creators that were doing colorful content like, like decorating fun, wise. whimsical yeah so when i saw your stuff i was like oh my god is she cooler than me <laughs> i'm kidding yeah because that was like two years ago now and yeah, yeah. back then it's just completely hgtv farmhouse white walls mm -hmm. everything was gray and i feel like we really helped in bringing color back into people's lives yeah so i immediately followed you Thank and you. i generally didn't think we were going to be friends because oh. people no because people on social media <gasps> yes are let's a talk little, about it yeah they're weird sometimes not they're everyone kind of um okay but their influencers <laughs> are kind of like they're too good to respond to you I don't know. It's so strange. I also, this is like something Tay and I are really passionate about talking to you to, we want to talk to you guys about because I feel like it's also like a very closed industry. Yeah. Um, but anyway, we can get into this later. You, I was your first follow. You were probably my first like interior decor follow, oh my God. which is crazy. And now we're here in LA two years later, just like doing best a podcast friends talking together. every single fucking day. I know. Having a business so, together. So I don't know. Where do we start? Obviously, I feel like when you, you started um, 
like, okay, I want to know about your history. You are an accidental expert. Mm -hmm. How did you go from someone who didn't finish high school into all of a sudden you're decorating people's homes and they're trying to hire you and they want your vision okay. in their homes. Let's go back to me not finishing high school. I did. What? <laughs> I know. Everyone thinks I'm a high school dropout, which is so funny. I call myself a high school dropout. Okay, well then that's why I think that. And I know because I graduated high school online. But listen, I know that's really normal now because after the pandemic COVID? and COVID, oh. um, it's like normal now, I guess. But at the time, oh my God, everyone and their mothers were calling me a high school dropout. Yeah. You're the only person I know who did that yeah. like, online. Um, I graduated, but let me tell you, I graduated like a year early because it She's was a like genius. No, no. I literally graduated with the worst GPA of my entire life. Um, because it was just that type of school where you could just like like it as fa- like the faster you were, the yeah. faster you could graduate. Take a bunch of courses. And I was just going through all my tests like a a a a a a a a a a I just wanted to get it over with because I wanted to graduate and I was already working. So I just wanted to leave. I was at the time in Miami, obviously, um, and I was doing photography. So I think that's kind of where we started. Um, Well, fully, like I was just, I've been working since I was young. I grew up in a family where uh, they believe, well, my father, ooh, we don't talk about our parents on social media. So this is going to be interesting. I roast my family on social media. Okay, I don't. I don't really talk about my parents at all. Um, but my dad it has been a person who had to work for everything he has done in his life. Um, they never gave him anything. You know, he grew up, you know, you know, whatever. He has like his own story, but his dad made him do everything. So obviously he wanted to do the same for us. So he made us work since we were really young and kind of like he wanted us to know the value of money. Yeah, my dad had us like negotiating with people already since day one, you know, like learning the value of money business, just business wise, you know. Um, So I've been working since I was really young. But most people who I I, I've shared this story before on social media and people are like, yeah, you've been working, but you've never had a real job. Mm -hmm. and it's it's so insulting because (laughs) people people think as a freelancer like your job's not real like people think if you work from home like you don't actually have a job and I know it's becoming more normal because after the pandemic and stuff but like you know I was I I never fully had a nine-to-five I never fully had like a regular job where you're working at a restaurant I was like doing anything I could that was creative because I was always a creative so I was like doing paintings and selling them you know like to like whoever I could but I want to clarify the reason why people give you hate for like people people give you a lot of hate and they're like you've never had a real job like you don't know what it's like to struggle or whatever it's because people who have worked in service industry restaurants retail or those really grueling nine to fives like it is a form of trauma like it is horrible working working under someone and you haven't really had that experience not to say that you've not worked for what you have but that's that's other people's perspective of most people have been treated like absolute shit working in service industries and it it is unfair and really horrible but it just is like a it's like a boot camp but that's for people. The, but that's the thing like i feel like a lot of people love to compare traumas or like yeah like, <laughs> like you didn't bad. experience the horrible stuff that i yes, experienced but i feel like everyone everyone's bad like you can't calculate everyone's bad like my bad could have been the same as your bad even though it could have been like a ho- way horrible like a way worse we experience. talked about this before yeah. um yeah we've talked about this um because you know trauma about our parents and stuff but anyway <laughs> <laughs> like you can't compare those things because you know my bad could have been like so bad mentally like i'm like oh my god that's the worst thing that's ever happened to me and then your ho- worst thing could have been like a million times worse than me but we're still feeling the same yeah pain. in perspective you we are both I mean? experiencing our worst things of our lives exactly anyway so i was doing a bunch of creative things i don't know i was like trying to get into the film world i, I was like 15 at the at the time and i was doing photography i picked up a camera you know I always love photography um and my parents are creatives they my dad started architecture my mom started interior design they never did anything with that which is why they're passionate about well they let me not go to school because I know most people don't have the they're the support. crazy cool parents Mo- most people don't have the support from their parents to like not go to school so my, I feel like they were way ahead of their times when they yeah. let me not go to college and I pursued 
you know, my dreams to go into film. So I started making videos. I was on YouTube since like 2014 trying to make YouTube videos. That is so funny. I know. And like everyone uh, back home would watch my YouTube videos. And then that's kind of how people started hiring me. Like I was doing like wedding shoots, like f- birthday shoots and stuff like that. So that's how I was making my money. I was also editing videos. I was like social media managing and I was doing everything, just trying to find myself, you know, typical. Uh, I, I guess I'm like 18, 20 at the time now. And I'm doing everything you could imagine to just like pay my rent because again my dad even though he had the money he fully wasn't like helping. He, he wasn't helping he fully was like if you're gonna leave and like go pursue your dreams like I want to move to LA which I did for two years and you know I was paying rent um and I was like I, n- I never had a car which well I didn't have a license until I was like 21 but which is so weird I know um but so I was fully paying my rent and stuff like the day I decided to leave my parents house I was going to be on my own so I was um and that really like at the time I feel like it sucked even though I know like some people don't even have the option like it was like I'm like privileged I guess because I could have stayed with my parents and like Mm -hmm. been okay but I was like no like I'm gonna go and I'm gonna hustle and I'm gonna do this and I hated my dad at the time because I'm like oh my god he could be helping me like there was times where I was like full out eating ramen every single day but even though I still do that I do that by choice I still do I that I love chicken ramen <laughs> um yeah so I think that really pushed me I think when my dad decided to do that which was it was really harsh and I think it was more harsh because he didn't do it to my brother oh which is like kind of weird so Yikes. I was like psychologically going through a lot like I was like I can't like my dad hates me like this is like so horrible like he just cut me off and like he doesn't care like I would get to the point where I didn't have money to eat and he'd be like you gotta figure it out but now i understand why he did that if he would have caved and given me like you know a hundred bucks to go to the grocery store then i would have just like mentally known it would have been like a spoiled brat well, mentally known i know like oh if i fail he'll always like save me so he never did and Props i feel, to him. i know and sarah my best friend oh well, you're my best friend too but <laughs> sarah we can have multiple best friends. yeah my best friend and Bello, my boyfriend, those two Who's people, my best friend. Who's your best friend? <laughs> those two people are fully the ones who really saw all of this happen. And I feel like they are the ones who can literally say, yeah, Danny's dad never caved and never helped her. Danny's dad like fully did that. I was or just the perspective of how a few years ago you were absolutely broke. Oh, yeah. And now, oh my God. Like, like fast forward, you are traveling the world yeah. doing major brand projects, being hired by a bunch of different Fortune 500 companies and also designing people's massive homes. It's a crazy transition within a few years. Yeah, this fully happened two years ago. Like, I, I couldn't pay, or three, I, this will be the third year. So Life has changed drastically yeah, in a few years. I wasn't able to, I couldn't afford my $600 rent like almost three years ago and now i'm moving into my dream house so this is this has been crazy i know i've been talking a lot but we're gonna go to break and we'll be back and and keep talking about our our ourselves story (laughs) daniela please tell me how did you go from film into decorating because they are quite different the reason why i see it like i feel like it's similar is because i was so i ended up going into the film industry and i was trying to become like a cinematographer a director i was doing everything i was like post-producing i was like set designing i was doing genuinely everything and i ended up really not liking the film industry and i know tay was also in it and she understands me which is why we're so similar we have so many similarities yeah you'll get to it but you know i was in this film industry um I feel like the industry was really toxic, but you also, also got fired from. <laughs> oh, oh my god! Um, I go way back with my boyfriend, my my boyfriend, right? yeah, Bello, and at the time we were friends, and he had uh, hired me on a Netflix job, and you know I was like. Oof, I don't know. I I guess I was like trying to do it all. So I wasn't great at my craft. Like I should have just focused on one thing mm-hmm. and been professional and like an expert at that one thing, which is I think where a lot of people go wrong. And so since I was trying to do it all, he hired me as an AC and, you know, I h- hadn't like had the craft. Oh, down. describe what an AC is. An people. AC is an assistant camera. So you're pulling focus. And what I mean by that, because I know it's like also confusing, is like you're on a monitor turning like a little circle so the camera is in focus at Constantly all times. Constantly in focus. Yeah. 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 And I was doing that and Bello, my friend at the time, he was the DP director of photography. So he was handling all the cameras. And I was too slow <laughs> at my job. And it kind of like didn't really know what I was doing. You know, I I had to like build the equipment and stuff and I was just too slow or, or like didn't really know what I was doing. And I got fired 
Did, the- did Bello fire you? Oh, no. Okay, so what else? He you? acted dumb. <laughs> oh, because he, he, he had a massive bad. crush on yeah, you. Yeah, he had a crush when we were friends, which is really oh. funny. But um, I got fired like the third day. It was so embarrassing, but I learned my lesson. And I feel like after that, I, I'm like nonstop. Like you won't see me like be like really, like I have a problem when. Yes. You know, uh, you won't be. Yeah. You do have it. We both have a problem. Anyway. Work. um. So I was doing that and I ended up leaving the film industry because I just felt like it wasn't creative enough for me. But because I didn't have a say in like the visuals mostly or like I just wanted to be in it like to be creative or like be able to do the set design or do whatever I wanted. Honestly, I'm very much a person who I just want to do what I want (laughs) Um, because I want to be happy and I want to be creative and I want my ideas to be out there. So I ended up leaving it, but I fell in love with set design which was really cool, a cool transition because, you know, I was kind of like creative directing these sets and now I get to creative direct people's homes or commercial spaces, which I think it's like very similar, but different. Now you have to think about functionality and designs and like there's like different aspects of it, which we've learned together. Um, and that's like for another time. But so I kind of did that transition, but obviously it didn't happen just like because I want to start decorating mm-hmm. um, Bello at the time. So this is like right when we almost when we started dating, um, he had come over. He saw my house the way it was decorated. This was my second place no this is my third apartment on my own and this was this time i'm back in miami because i had moved around everywhere um i I had come back from columbia because i was living in columbia doing film and now i'm in miami with sarah my best friend and we had painted the wall so crazy like i didn't even know where i got the inspo like obviously pinterest and stuff and i was sharing that on social media um and he saw it and he was like hey i'm opening a film store can you decorate can you decorate it and i was like what in the world like I've never decorated anything for anyone other than myself and he really gave you like your first chance oh my god it's so sweet he gave me the best relationship ever and he made me a decorative no I'm kidding he didn't like but he really gave me the opportunity yeah and I I am so lucky for that opportunity because it really like not everyone just gets to decorate a store Mm -hmm. you know what I mean but along the way I've learned like just decorate your house and 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 that way you can oh my that's how both of us got started Exactly. Like it's because of the apartment I decided to decorate and I didn't count my deposit even though I was so broke and couldn't afford rent. I'm like, if I lose a deposit, it's fine. I'm going to be happier because my walls are pink and I have a rainbow and I have like all these crazy things around me. Um, And that apartment and my creativity in that apartment was the reason, you know, he let me fully go into his store and give me creative uh, creative freedom and just decorate that store. And so that is Bellows Film Lab in Miami, which is also a cool concept. It's like a like a film story which is cool and original and a niche but so that was really the start of it all um i have been doing social media as i mentioned since like 2013 um all those accounts after bellows first store came your first client but that's what i'm saying i've been on social media for a while so i had my social media account already um actually no it was brand new because i had started a social media account with sarah my roommate about thrifted clothes because i love clothes too so we had a this is Pe- like we had a peach tree account since the og so i made my own so i actually didn't have any followers and then i decided to you know i started posting some things and someone asked like what is your job on social media and you know i, I had like i think like three thousand followers on tiktok and i responded to that comment and i ended up making a tour of bellows and i said i was a decorator because i truly had enjoyed that you know, that experience so much. I wanted to make it my career and I had no idea. And I was like, I'm going to use social media to advertise myself, which is what I've been doing all my life and try to get a client from that. Little did I know that video would go viral. I mean, at the time, I I think it hit like a million, which was like, I mean, that is a lot. That's a lot. You faked it till you made it. You were just like, I'm a decorator. I seriously am outing myself because I seriously just lied to the world and told everyone I was a decorator. That's what so many people do though. Like not in a bad way, but like, yeah, you you kind of manifested. It's like, this is what I am. And then people hire you. Yeah. And then now that's what you are. And that's what fully I am. And I am truly so happy I did that. And I'm so happy my first client came from that video. And she gave me, you know, she believed in me and trusted me and let me decorate her house. And that's still, I'm sorry, Jay, because I know we've done projects together, but that's, that's still favorite my favorite. Project? But I think it's just like the emotional attachment behind it. Like, even though it's so gorgeous and generally, like I am so, I'm just so impressed I was able to do it. It's knowing it was like truly my first client. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. It was amazing. And yeah, I mean, I feel like we can go on, but I want to talk about your story too. 
because then we can talk about how we met. My God, we can talk forever. I know. I know. So let's generally, I feel like the people don't know this. So I'm just going to go and ask. I know you went to school. So let's talk about how you went to school, Ooh. what you studied. <laughs> school is the worst. Yeah, I get asked and that a lot. And where are you from? Oh, I'm from Hawaii, like the best place in the world. It is. And I feel like I really give off those aloha vibes. <laughs> <laughs> you do. And so I'm from Hawaii and I left when I was 17 to go to college. And college was a massive waste of money for me. I learned almost nothing <laughs> and I didn't enjoy it. The, so what did you study? I studied advertising. Yeah. And I didn't, I never went into advertising well, after that. Which is funny because if you tell most people like, and you're like, I didn't learn anything, but it kind of makes sense that you studied advertising because now you do social media, but I know it did not help you in any way because you studied this years ago and now everything's so different. Like you didn't learn anything that helps you now. Well, aside from not, like I actually didn't learn anything because my professors didn't oh, okay. show up to class. Oh, like, okay. okay. I swear okay. to you, I think my professor showed up Everyone was four like, times in one semester. Island time. Yeah. <laughs> no, this was in America. Or oh. America. This was in um the mainland. We call I, the mainland. Yeah. I thought you went to school in Hawaii. No, I left when I was 17. This is college. Yeah, oh. I didn't learn anything in college. Absolutely nothing. It was just a bunch of student debt for no reason. And it really pissed me off. And so, yeah, I graduated college with student debt. And I was frustrated. I was like, I learned nothing. This degree is horrible. I don't want to go into this industry. And I'm stuck with tens of thousands of dollars of and debt. And for example, I feel like what I was privileged enough with, like, I, I kind of was like born with like, or not even like my parents engraved it into my head, whatever I want to do, I could make happen. And so that was like why I was so fully like confident that I didn't have to go to school to achieve something because I was like, I'm just, I know what I want to do. So I'm not going to waste my time and go to school to do that because I don't need to learn film in school. I'm just going to go and do it because you mm -hmm. need experience. So like you went to school and like I was forced in a way because I've been anti-school my whole yeah. life. I, I have pretty severe ADHD. And so I knew that school like f structured education is not for me. I yeah. love to learn outside of structured education. Exactly. And I'm like, I'm not going to sit down and read a textbook all like in a classroom. It's so unuseful for me. And I tried to not go to college and my parents they were like, you are going to college. We are paying for four years. So you are going. And I was really annoyed about it. And I didn't apply to any school but one that has like an 80% acceptance rate. So <laughs> I was like, I'm not even going to try to go to a good school. And I go to this school and I graduate. And then on graduation day, while I'm walking to get my diploma, um, my dad sends me a text after I finish walking and he's like, congrats, kid. Now get to paying off those student loans. Yeah. And so they like, tricked you they into tricked paying me. your Because I was like, I'm loans. sorry. That's a, that's a bad joke. I don't understand. You said you're paying for college. And my dad was like, do you not remember signing that paperwork? And I was like, what are you talking about? And he's like, you signed no, a bunch of loan paperwork. No, literally. And I'm sorry that happened. They because... conned me into going to college. <laughs> that's insane. That's insane. And like, what what I think is crazy is that I feel like most, not most parents, I'm not saying most parents are going to make you pay for it, but most parents are going to really force you to go to school. And it sucks for those creatives that who really didn't want to go to school. And now they're stuck and paying all of that money yeah. just because their parents. I think it's, it's the, their generation of like, if you don't go to college, you won't be successful. But that's kind of what our show is about. We're showing that you can be successful through so many different avenues. You do not have to go to school, but there's also a lot of benefits to going to college. Like the one benefit I had from going to college was the connections I made. Or, yeah, I think that's the biggest benefit of going to school. Yeah, 100%. You know I mean? And yeah. also that's kind of like life. Um, networking and who you know is, that is massively important to be successful, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and so tell me a little bit about, so you went to college and you studied advertisement. Like, were you actually interested in that or did you want to do something else? Like, why? Um, well, my professor would never show up, so I didn't learn anything. And I just graduated to just get it over with. But did, um, but did you have a passion for marketing? Absolutely not. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. So how did you transition from studying marketing, Tay, Taylor? Um, no, Tay. Tay. Tay, Tay. Yeah. Well, you just Tay, call Tay. me Daniela. 
<laughs> um, how did you transition from studying marketing to I know you went into the film industry? Which is so cute because we were both in film. I know. I know, which is really crazy because I feel like not a, it wasn't that popular back then. I'm I'm younger than you, so I so really at the time when you were doing it, it wasn't that popular. Oh, it's extremely male dominated and just older, like older people. I was I absolutely stuck out. I was a sore thumb. I'm like the girl who has pink hair who's like like in her 20s and everyone else is an older typically white guy with kids i was always the only girl on set it's crazy it was terrifying yeah Yeah. i mean i think it's still like that it's still really male dominated so it's just so funny that you and i both went into this um yeah i was doing post-production just because i taught myself i was the one thing i was passionate about was video editing and motion graphics and teaching myself like digital art and so i taught myself after effects and premiere and i started as an intern in a company and i worked my way up and eventually when that company wasn't paying me what i deserved um and by that i mean i think i was making like minimum wage and i asked them if i could get a promotion because i was doing much more senior work and they said no then i was like well then i'm just gonna go out and get it myself because i know my worth So it was the scariest decision, but I left my job and I started freelancing and I was charging. My God, I think I think the first freelance job I ever did, I charged a day rate of 600 a day, which 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 is so much. That's so much. Yeah, I had major imposter syndrome. I was like, oh, my God, this is my first freelance job. And I can't believe I just said that number. I can't believe I got that number. And they said, yeah, that's crazy. Because as a freelancer, I seriously struggled with knowing my worth. Yeah. And I was always undercharging. Like, I, yeah. I, you even know when I started social media and we were doing collaborations. Oh, like, Danny. I, I, oh, my God. I had so many followers and I was really undercharging. So I feel like you really helped me. Bella helped me. But yeah. I've been undercharging for, like, I think this... Like I stopped like two years ago. And that is that is not my problem. That's never been my problem. Um, even though I had imposter syndrome and I was like, I can't believe, like, do I know what I need to know to be charging this much um, at 600 a day? I only lasted really short at charging 600 a day because then I <laughs> she decided, went up. She I went was up. Like, fuck it, I'm going to do 800 a day. <laughs> oh I'm worth God. it. And I would get hired. Like people respected my, they respected my day rate and they paid me that because I was talented. Like I was really good at my job. And along the way, I definitely had like older guys, um, like older creative directors or older executive producers who would say condescending things or like tell me I'm not worth, like, um, like before I worked with them, they'd be like, you're charging 800 a day. You think that you think that, you know what, like you can, you think you deserve that. And I'd be like, I don't need your money. You can find out or you cannot. Like I've literally said that yeah. and then people ended up hiring me and then they tried to hire me for future jobs. And now and this all makes sense because you are literally so successful and you bought your second home already and so this just makes yeah. sense. This really makes sense. So I feel like also part of being a freelancer and a creative, you just have to know your worth or even just in a corporate job like you need to be charging. I know like at a corporate job you can't tell them like oh this is yeah. how much I charge. But you can when ask you're a freelancer. But you can ask you for can. a raise. No, but you can always ask for a raise after a year you're there at a corporate job or the worst like, they'll say is no. Exactly. And then you can leave just like I did. Exactly. So I know you went, you know, from your you started freelancing, but you've worked for big companies like Google. Yeah, Google, Apple, uh, I don't know, Facebook, Lyft, like um, massive advertising agencies, Ford, like yeah. cars. I've done it, I've done it all. And so how did you go? from that you know you were kind of like doing people's dream like you were working people's dream job you yeah, know editing was my dream job I was so happy um I was so passionate about it I taught myself everything and I I I landed a very successful career and that's why ending up doing interior design is is I can't believe it's that like, I'm here and it's like random it's I have no background in it the yeah. same way I had no background in in editing but it, yeah I'm also passionate about it and now accidentally ended up being an expert in this and who made you do that transition <laughs> the love of my life Daddy Claire <laughs> so guys um kind of like our origin story or how we met obviously with social media as we said you know we were following each other and um Tay DM me because I love talking about money she loves it you guys will learn 
um, on this podcast that she loves talking about it. And it, truly, I do too, but because it's just a topic that no one talks about. And because influencers are very clicky or like they, we have both tried to reach out to other other interior people and they will just completely ghost us. They will ignore yeah. us. Like, oh, like, it hurts your feelings. When I was, yeah, when I started social media as a content creator, well, as a content creator, but as a interior decorator, because I've lived a lot of social media lives. Um, as a decorator, I would I needed help because brands were reaching out, you know, for collaborations. And I had never done this. And I was like, so in all that people even wanted to collaborate with me. And the only thing I thought about was like, okay, let me DM people or reach out and see what they charge. And they all left me a red, all of them. <laughs> So which is rude. insane it's so sad so like no one really wants to help you it's kind of like a secret world and it's not i it's not just like that in the social media world it's also like just in general yes, like people, people don't, don't like talk, talk about pay even though yeah. pay transparency helps everyone. helps everyone yeah like i the reason why i knew to charge 800 a day for my day rate is because i had people in the editing world that were kind enough to share with me what their day rate was exactly and it's like yeah we're doing the same work i should get paid the same yeah so so we met um because you asked me about a collab um and and you were asking about like how much i charged mm -hmm. and i don't which know which is like a ballsy question yeah and the company lied to you and said i didn't charge anything which i had but it was really little but i, I still no, like had. companies are so shady they literally told me that they were like well we're working with danny cleric and she's doing this job for free so you should do it for free as well because she has more followers than you because i had just started yeah yeah and that's really sad that a company would even do that to a creator or even like a, i don't know that's crazy that they did that even though i was charging i was charging so little for what i had but so that's how we bonded we bonded over money <laughs> and then i told tay how much i charged and she's like whoa you're crazy you're undercharging like i just charge like whatever like my last remember. collab it was like an insane number that i had never like thought about i think that you did i think the, the the specific instance we're talking about just to like give a real number was you did a collab for a thousand dollars no it was 500 for 500 it was and, 500 and like 500 dollars is amazing it's and great. i had three hundred thousand followers at the time just so people kind of get the kind of understand yeah. because i know sometimes like there's like no it's ranges important, yeah to to know what your following was at the time yeah so yeah she had about three hundred thousand followers and she charged five hundred dollars for a collab which, which is so was, undervaluing yourself but that was so much for me at the yeah. time because i'm telling you guys like that like almost paid for my rent yeah you know, well i had already moved into a new place but like you know i i couldn't pay my rent and now i'm making it almost in one collapse i was like whoa yeah. that's amazing i'm happy and then tay reaches out and she's like girl what are you doing <laughs> because i mean my my background is marketing and even though i learned almost nothing from my degree i do know the value of influencer marketing it is yeah. it's astronomical like collabing with an influencer can change an entire business yeah and it is really, really valuable. Any any company should work with influencers because that's the new form of marketing. Yeah. And because I charged $500, I ruined it for creators like you that yeah. were charging so much more. And they're like, no, sorry. Yeah. I, I wish I could remember what I was actually trying to charge because I literally would say it. I just don't you remember. You told me you would be charging $2,500 or $3,000 a video. And you when were at, I just started. Yeah. I'm and crazy. I remember because I was like, holy, that was like, I had never experienced getting paid anything like that. My biggest advice to people, like in any freelance world, like when I worked in post production or production, like I don't know, just say it, say a big number. They're probably gonna come back and they're gonna negotiate. Yeah. Like they might just ghost you, but a lot of the times they tell you, "Oh, that's what you want. We can only afford X." Mm -hmm. So yeah, just say a big number and see what comes back. Yeah, I think the year I met you. It was the first time I had ever made ten thousand dollars on a collab. That's but, so and that much was, money. And that was like six months after we had talked, and then and eventually we had the same manager and stuff. And I made ten k off of like a, a collab for like a backpack or something. That is what, like that is an insane amount of money, and we're so privileged that that's yeah. the kind of world that we're living in. Ten thousand dollars to work with someone can potentially come back and like return of investment. You can come back with like a, a hundred times that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I was so in shock they even said yes, you know. And I was so grateful. And obviously, it wasn't just for one video. It was kind of like it was like multiple videos and stuff. But I was just so happy. And that's how we got really close. And I had already been decorating, so I, I think at the time I already had like 
like multiple remote clients, but I had done like four in-person projects or something. And Tay's house was very cool. And I was like, Tay, you are so talented. Can you please just quit your job and decorate with me? Which is such a ballsy thing to ask a stranger because we had never met in person. We had never met. And you were like, quit your job. Let's work together. (laughs) And I was like, Danny, I want to so badly, but I have a lot of financial anxiety because of like having debt and yeah. just my parents have scammed me out of money. They've like stolen money from yeah. me and my whole family has. And I'm very anxious financially that I'm going to lose all my money. And so when Danny was telling me to quit my job, I was like, She's I'll never, I will never do that. And it had already been a year of us talking online. So you know, a year had already passed. I was getting money from social media. Tay was helping me with like learning my worth and charging what I was supposed to. And I was getting clients from social media. So I was doing well. And I was like, Tay, I've made this much money from decorating. And we have the social media. Like, you will be fine if you quit your job. Like, yeah, just- you kept saying that I'll be fine. And you were doing well. But I was I was also doing well in my own professional life. Like, I had worked, I'd worked my, my whole career to be a really success, a really successful freelancer in yeah. the bay area for production or for post production and i was working at companies like google and apple and salesforce and i was and, like hey that's not that's not where you belong but that was my dream for a long time like working at google was my dream I and i achieved it so the idea of letting it go was so so scary well just like our amazing producer shared uh he was listening to a podcast and he heard conan o'brien say something similar that it was like you have to fail at what you thought you had to do in order to succeed at what you were meant to do and i think that's exactly what happened to both of us yeah actually because i didn't stop working my my real job um until i was laid off like they had to force me out and i was laid off because of the economy and like massive tech layoffs in the bay area and and now we're here decorating yeah. and we are on our third project. We it, and Fourth. It, fourth. Yeah. We are traveling the world together, designing yeah. people's homes. We just and- decorated internationally in Australia, mm-hmm. which is absolutely insane. I never thought it was something we were ever going to do. Yeah. And here we are at our podcast. So, oh my God, this has been a roller coaster. Yeah. But- and I guess um, we're going to have a full episode just talking more in depth about our our latest international project, Australia. Yeah. This has been amazing. We're in LA, so we're currently going to go around LA, meet creatives, interview them, talk to them, find a little bit about how they accidentally fall into this niche um, and their expertise and kind of get to know their journey and and get inspired and motivated by their stories, honestly. They're really cool people. We, we've we been following them for a while. I know, I know Tay has. Like, I'm excited. Yeah, some of these people I've been DMing and we've been internet friends for years and now we're about to meet them in person and, we and I'm like fangirling yeah. and just their work in real life and this is going to be really exciting to talk to other people similar like Tay and I doing other things that kind of have a similar story but in a different way. Yeah. I was so excited to start this series. I am so excited about the first people we're going to be interviewing. Tay, can you what is it? What is it going to be about? Where are going to where are we going to be? This one, I I never thought that I would end up doing a show inside an escape room, but we are so lucky we landed an interview with professional escape room designers. Like, and how yeah. is that a job? We're well, going to be interviewing people who have the coolest jobs. Coolest jobs. They're game designers, which is so cool. And Tay's boyfriend is a toy designer. So I am just so excited to learn more about this. Yeah. And we're like, I'm really excited about being inside an escape room. Like I've never, ever been. Tay's never been. And I've been a few times. And this is going to be so cool. So I'm so excited about that. So that's going to be the next episode of the series. And I can't wait to see it. Are you excited to go in an escape room because you've never been? I'm kind of scared. I heard there can be they can <laughs> be, spooky. be spooky. Yeah. <laughs> hey everyone, I hope you guys enjoyed our first episode. I feel like it was really cool to talk about our stories because I feel like we don't share enough on social media. And I'm truly just so excited about this new journey. We have a website, accidentalexperts.com. You can send in your own questions and also give us ideas for who you would want to see us talk to in an interview. Mm-hmm. You can also send us pictures of your spaces and ask for decorating tips or yeah. DIYs or opinions on a DIY you created, which I'm really excited about. Please send us your DIYs or homes. But thank you so much for joining us yeah and And thank you to our crew and our team this is a very high-end production and we are so lucky 
Um, Thank you to Digital Brand Architects, our team, our management. We have the same manager, which yeah, is how cute cool. are we? <laughs> You're so cute. And thank you to Human Content. You guys are amazing. We love you. And this has been so fun. Thanks for joining me, Tay. Uh, what? Like, this is your show? Thanks for coming on my show, Danny. I'm kidding. <laughs> I just wanted you to say your name. I love your name. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments. If you're enjoying Accidental Experts, click over there to watch more episodes and don't forget to subscribe to follow the journey.